Well, hello everybody. My name is Shelly and I am so ridiculously glad you're here. I suspect you're here because you saw the title of this video. And today I'm going to be taking a look at Jacqueline Cosmetics, the first eyeshadow palette in her eponymous line, if you will. So I have a number of, of Jacqueline products. I think I'm going to put some of them on my face today and I'm not going to do a whole face of it because she doesn't, well, some of her products, like I bought this one that I don't, I don't care for that. This was the one that most interested me out of her foundation line and that didn't really work for me. So hi, if you guys don't know already, I'm not a professional makeup artist. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I get nothing in PR. I bought all this stuff with my own money and I tend to give very honest, sometimes brutally honest reviews because nobody's paying me to tell you my opinion. It is what it is. So this is the this is the palette. I think there were supposedly two covers. I didn't pay any attention when I ordered it, uh, so I didn't pay attention to which cover it was, but I do believe there's two covers. This one has a raised J, not unlike some of her other products. Like I'll just grab this one here that has the raised J and the and the rose gold. I think it's beautiful. I don't mind this at all. For some reason, the black rose gives me a little KVD vibes and I'm, I'm not quite sure why. Anyway, it's got a, a very matte raised Jacqueline right here and it says, Dear Mom. I admit, I didn't watch her video with it. Part of it is because I've been traveling so much. Part of it is because I, I have been suckered into purchasing things based on the enthusiasm for people and I wanted to give this a very honest, clear-headed opinion. I feel like there's going to be some people that may hold off on buying this until they get other people's opinions and so I, I didn't want anybody else's opinions to sway mine. Plus it was 45 minutes long, her video, and I just, I haven't had time. So th there we go. Th there's That's my excuse. This palette though really spoke to me as a very wearable, nothing crazy. I would call this a neutral palette, but with a grungier side to it, because I feel like these greens, especially this right here, and some of these browns, give it a little bit of, I wanna say like a decayed look to it. I love it, I think it's absolutely beautiful. It does say uh, in here, Dear Mom, thank you for raising me to be the woman I am today. All of my strengths and best attributes are a direct reflection of you. You are my forever role model and my forever best friend. Thank you for choosing to be my mom this one's for you. That's very sweet. It's very sweet. Let's take a look at the palette here. So we've got some, some lighter shades. Do you need three lighter shades? I don't know. I feel like these two are very similar. One's a little bit more vanilla. One has a slight pink tinge to it. This one's got a little bit more of a neutral toned sand color. I do like the combination of mattes and, and shimmers. Heavily on the mattes, which is actually my preference. I like a little bit of shimmer. I don't need too many too many shimmers in my look. I do feel like some of these are nice transi transition shades, but this one and this one, they look very similar, don't they? Can you see those two shades? So did we need two of those? I do like these kind of gray tones. These two are very similar too. One's just slightly lighter than the other appears in the pan. I love a palette with a super dark, uh, rich black in it or a dark espresso, something that I can really deepen up and smoke out a look, use it as a liner, and I like a palette that has a lighter shade. It doesn't have to be a shimmer, like this one, you've got a shimmer here, you've got the, sh the silver, these are beautiful. Do you need, do you need those? Maybe, I don't know. It depends on the kind of look you're doing and the level of artistry you have. So sometimes I like to look at palettes. Where's the color story? Like what's the eye look put together? And I think maybe going down some, you definitely have some eye looks. Okay. Uh, across a row, like that row, that's too deep, I think, for a normal regular eye look. That one, I probably could get one out of it. This is all shimmers. I probably wouldn't do an eye, eye look with just all that row. Now, if I go down uh, diagonally, yes. Okay. Yeah. If you train your eye to look at things a little bit differently, maybe even squares, uh, that's not really working for me. Not really so much that. Now we're starting to get into squares that I can do. That's awfully dark. You know, the layout of the palette, I know what she did. She went from lightest to darkest. Okay, I get it. I can respect that. Makes it easy. But sometimes us non-makeup artists need a little help looking at these palettes and figuring out how to put a conducive look together, cohesive look together. I don't mind color for like date night, but I tend to do very monochromatic looks. So it's not that I don't like color. I just don't always do jarring looks. I have two of her cream kind of bronzery. I'm going to use Sandy. I've got a couple of them. I haven't bought everything she's put out. I just, I can't afford it, first of all. There's no reason to do, to purchase everything a brand launches. But I have picked up the ones that I think have interested me the most. I'm trying to find a good, this one will work here. 
Yeah, it's not too fluffy. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this cream bronzer. I don't mind the formula of these at all. So if you are a cream bronzer type person, let me know what you think of this, if you've tried it, or if you're interested in trying this. I've been using a lot of the Soul Beauty lately, but now that I put this on, I'm like, oh. It's actually, a, it's a nice size. The Soul Beauty one is, is huge. So I find that sometimes if I'm just doing a simple makeup look, all I need is that. I don't even need blush. And it just feels fresh and polished without feeling overly heavily made up. Whatever's left on the brush sort of browns to get me. I call this a three head. I don't have a huge forehead. So some people have five heads. I have a three head. I have a number of her bronzer blush duos. I feel like I can just grab any one of these and it's going to work. Sunkissed and Bronze Moment in it. So it's one of her blush duos. And that's what it looks like. Yeah, I think that'll work. I'm going to try the blush on a little bit up here. I don't mind the formulas of these at all. I have too much product to pan anything, but I'm pretty sure that if I were to do another big declutter, which I'm, I'm due for, I, I wouldn't declutter these. I actually really like them. It's working pretty well. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the bronzer in here too. I'm just gonna kind of warm up the back side of that. I do tend to over abuse blush. You know, and it's funny because I I fully admit that I do that, but I didn't grab any of her bougie rougie, either the cream sticks or the uh, cream palette. I didn't grab any of that. Because I think I do want to do three looks with this. Um, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll, what I'll normally do, which is a look here, a look here. I'll take it off, come back in with a third and a final cohesive look that'll probably be what's on me the rest of the day. As I mentioned earlier, I feel like going down a row isn't going to really work for me. So if I do want to keep things to something that it would make sense to me, which is, hey, I don't have time to play and, and create and whatever else. I just want to know, is something going to work for me? I have a hair. I did, I did wash my hair today. So yeah, after that. Okay, look, back in here. I feel like going down a row is a little bit more challenging, but going down a column. And if you do that, you've got five looks, right? One, two, three, four, five. Super intrigued by this look right here. I want to do this one first. So I'm gonna start with this shade right here, which is kind of a tannish, it's called Pinty Butter, like peanut butter, I'm guessing. I didn't, I didn't listen to why she named all these. Usually there's a story, an awfully cute story about why she names things a certain way. Don't come here looking for information. Come here because we're ladies of a certain age and we're trying to figure out if this is something that's gonna be worth our money. Can we get multiple looks that are gonna go into our lifestyle? Is it a waste of money? This is the third time I've gone into that Pinty Butter shade. So is it going to work for our lifestyle? Can we get multiple looks from it? I'm going to scoot you in. So I went into that shade three times. Perfectly appropriate contour shade. It's not too pigmented. It would probably work well for, for work and is a good sort of foundation for transitioning to a lot of other colors. I'm going to grab this kind of warmer brown here and I'm going to put that into my... I didn't tap it off that time. Again, tutorials, not something I do because I'm not a makeup artist, but we can do an application video and I just started talking to you guys through what I'm doing. I do have close set hooded eyes, so I try to take that into consideration. And as a lady of a certain age with a corporate job, I tend to not do like super crazy looks, although my husband likes them for, for date night. So I do sometimes incorporate some bold colors. I tend to do things a little smoky. Smokier eye and a lighter lip, I guess. I don't know. So that's the darker shade now. Transition, they blended well together. I used the same brush both times. I'm gonna go into a little bit smaller of a brush and I'm gonna take the deepest shade in this row. I kind of almost want to use that green instead, but we're gonna we're gonna keep these to the the columns that they're in because sometimes when it's early in the morning and you're trying to get ready to go, are you gonna bounce all over? Maybe I don't know. I like things to kind of be provided to me so I don't have to think too much early on, especially if I'm waiting for the coffee to kick in. I've had to go into it a number of times to kind of build the shade up, which I don't mind doing. So if you're somebody who is cautious about using color or likes to use something a little bit more subtle, this might actually be really good for you. I didn't swatch any of these first. I had heard uh, from one other YouTuber, the only video I saw on it, it said that the formula was a little on the dry side. So I thought, you know what, with that already in my mind, I didn't want to confirm nor deny. I really wanted to just check out the products on its own here. So I'm going to go into this gorgeous grungy green and a little drier than some uh, shimmers. This one's called Family AF. This might be my favorite shade in this palette. Typically, I would not use a brush to apply shimmers just because I tend to like them to be a little bit more saturated. I feel like I had some fallout on that. And I'm going to go back into that first brush and in the shade here. I was hoping that this Family AF would be like my wow shade. And I'm not necessarily wowed by it. I do like this kind of grungier gold green. I think it's actually really pretty. It does feel a little dry. It's not as smooth and satiny as I would have thought it would be. 
um, kind of what I was expecting, unfortunately. But I think it did go on okay. I'm hoping it doesn't it doesn't crease. I'm really rooting for Jacqueline. I want her to have a home run. I really do. I've got this little flat liner brush. I'm gonna go back into Betty, which is the darker shade. In this column, I'm just gonna continue this lash line down a little bit out here. I think I'm gonna go into that gold color again, the family AF here. And we're gonna go into this champagne shimmer over here. Lighten things up a little bit. I do need to lighten up under here. I do wear glasses a lot of the time. And so I do have some discoloration. And I had a sneezing attack right before I started filming this. It's not going to be a full look right now, just so you know. But I can tell you that I feel like the shadows applied very well. Let's throw some mascara on this. <laughs> and we'll come back into a second look. All right, you guys, look number one. And I feel like as I'm looking at this in a mirror, it does look like satin on my eyes. I feel like the colors blended in very well together. It has this sort of rich, velvety kind of look to it. It's very pretty. This is absolutely a look I would wear. Yeah. And I wasn't sure what to expect of that kind of, what I call it, like an acid, grungy gold color here. I wasn't really sure what to expect, and I actually really like it. Okay, let's move on to the other lid. This row right here intrigues me because we've got this rust next to the green and there's such fall related colors. I can see how you would use a shade, like you could do pairs of shades. I think she's got it laid out well to be able to do that. I'm taking this all the way up here. The shade itself is too light for me personally when what I prefer in eyeshadows as like an all over the shadow all over the eye shadow. It's very sheer, and I think it's, it makes a good color to buff out and blend out. Or if you're gonna do something like setting your eyeshadow primer, or if you've got like an eyeshadow base on, I can see using that to kind of set that down a little bit. But as you can tell, it does make my eyes look very hood heavy right here. So let's just try some of her, her shades here to see if we can't do the optical illusion here. I'm gonna grab the kind of rust colored, it's called Puddin' Girl. The first one was called Honey. I'm not really getting honey out of that, but I'm gonna try Puddin' Girl right here. Okay. The the pigments are going on very sheer. They're not as maybe as saturated as I sort of got used to with the Morphe palette. I feel like I have enough Jaclyn products now or Jaclyn collab product that as I'm doing, you know, my shop, my stash and really focusing on a brand for a month, I could do I could really focus on just her palettes, which would give me an excuse to kind of get back into them. I'm going to take this dark green. I feel like this would make a really pretty uh, lower lash line liner. Like that's a look I would do with a very, like a very neutral or maybe a warm neutral eye look. And I would maybe buff that into my lower lashes. A little complimentary without being too predictable. And this is kind of giving me fall fall vibes here. So it's interesting that her first palette would come out in the spring and it wouldn't be necessarily uh, a spring release. I think it's actually pretty smart for her to do a palette that's going to be something that you can wear all year round because it's such heavy into neutrals. It does have a little bit of that, you know, vegetative decay, which I love, grungy green eyeshadow. This palette doesn't have a mirror. I don't know if you need it or not, and it's a good size to me. So I'm going to grab the kind of bronze shimmer in here. Just press that to my eyelid. Oh yeah. Super pretty. And instead of doing the green like I was going to, I'm going to go back into that kind of rust color. And that's going to go my lower lash and kind of warm up that green a little bit. I love doing a shadow type liner. A, because it's softer. And B, ladies of a certain age, we don't need harsh lines. So let me put on some mascara. I'll be right back. Okay, you guys. I am definitely getting fall vibes with this palette so far. It's a variation on theme, right? It looks very similar to this, but they're not similar, but different. Yeah, I like those. Okay, so let's take this off and I wanna try to incorporate a number of the other shadows in my third and final look, so I'll be right back. Okay, a little cleaned up. Let's come in here with our third and final look. And of course I've got you guys so far zoomed in that I have to kind of move out of the way to actually show you the palette. I'm gonna start with this kind of vanilla shade, which is the other of the lighter shades that I haven't used yet. I did put a little, like I did the first look, I put a little of the Beauty Bay Eyelid Primer. It's just been a super easy go-to one to keep here at my makeup table, especially when I'm doing multiple looks and I'm kind of going through products relatively quickly. It's nice to have an inexpensive budget brand that just really works. I really wanna try something with these gray shade. So I'm going to take this one. This is the lighter of the grays. The brush is probably a little bigger than I need it to be. This actually might be a really great work shade. If you are someone who likes cool tones, wants a very simple, clean aesthetic, this darker or this lighter of the two grays, like, well, you've got this gray right here and then you've got this one. This one's kind of a it almost feels like it's got a little bit of a green undertone to it, but this one right here. I think if I'm doing a, a cool look 
cool tone looked for work. Yeah, that might be all I need. So I feel like this palette does give you a good way to do either a cool toned work look or a warm toned work look. I think you could literally grab one matte shade like this and maybe a little pop of one of the shimmers if you even needed it, or just like this all over your lid, a little bit of mascara, maybe an itty tiny bit of, of liner if you needed to. I feel like that would give me, give me the work look that I would gravitate towards. I'm gonna use this shade right here and just sort of deepen up my crease a little bit. Yeah, this one feels, these ones, these darker ones feel a little bit more pigmented. The mid-tones really sheer out well, so that makes them actually very easy to use transition shade. I'm not finding a ton of fault with this palette yet, you guys. I kind of went into it, you know, while I've, I've spent my own money and nobody wants to spend their own money on something and then go, so bad. And you don't want to have to fight with either returning it or just, eating the fact that you just threw away the money on it. Part of me is like the pride part where you go, do you want to, want to admit that you wasted your money on something? And then the other part of me is it has a responsibility to give you guys an honest opinion. I'm not upset yet with any of these shades that I've tried. This one, because it's so pigmented, I think a little goes a long way. I'm very intrigued by this shimmery green right here. So I'm gonna take a, do I have a flat brush? Grab that on this. Oh yeah, very smooth actually. Maybe maybe not as pigmented as uh, apply it with your finger. And if you're not a typical green eyeshadow wearer, that's a nice subtle way to do green without doing like, hey Kelly Green, notice me. I didn't want to do like a full on, you know, green look. I just kind of wanted a little nod of it because I'm doing so many gray tones in here. Very pretty. I actually really like that. I'm looking for colors I haven't used yet. I haven't used this dark charcoal gray yet. Let me grab that on a flat liner brush. It's actually a lighter shade than I thought it was going to be. These are all very complementary colors. Even, you know, the greens and the rest colors, I think because they're such, I don't know, I just feel like they're very, I know that's very severe because <laughs> I'm going this, this bold smoky look here. But all of a sudden, putting that dark gray underneath my eyes made my brown eyes really pop, I feel like. Yeah. I'm super excited. And we have these lighter colors here to buff out those shades a little bit just to make them a little softer. I'm going to go in with that dark black too. And we're going to stamp muted shades, muted colors. I think that's probably what I would say I would call this palette is a muted colored palette. It's a colorful palette if you don't love color. It's a, a neutral palette here. Okay, uh, I think I wanna put a little of this sort of mid-tone brown on my lids. Even though it's a little darker than I probably need to go, I wanna just sort of push this down here first and then I'm gonna load one of those shimmers on top of it. Which one did I use? Oh, this one. That would be a pretty shade all over the lid for work as well. Okay, I'm digging it. I've used that one, that one, that one. I've used that one. I haven't used this one. You know what, we're gonna, we're gonna throw this on the lid here. I'm gonna put a little bit right in the center. So halo look here. Wow, that is a beautiful, stunning, like liquid silver. Okay, I want to take, I can't remember which one I used. I think I used this one, right? I'm going to use this one. I don't think I've used this one yet. I'm going to use this one to soften up because while that's pretty, I don't want it to be too scary and lose some of the intensity. I mean, there's a little bit of kick up, but really not a ton. That's actually really nice. So then I don't feel like I've got this dirty, dirty palette already. It's actually stayed pretty tidy. Yeah, this is fun. I know this is a lot of eyeshadow and you would normally do this just for every day. I'm going to wear it today and probably tonight too. I feel like I need something in my inner corner to lighten it up a little bit. I think I'm gonna use this matte, which frankly has become really one of my favorite ways to do eye brightener in my inner corner, look more wide open and awake, is to use a matte as opposed to a shimmer. So I mean, I'm gonna actually even dry a little bit of it up here too. Let's put some mascara on. I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on the new Jaclyn Hill palette. Okay, you guys, I am back with my third and final look. Yes, I probably put too many eyeshadows on, but I gotta be honest, this palette actually performed very, very well. I'm gonna grab some of her lip products here. I've got one of her liners. I'm gonna throw this on really fast, except for it needs to be sharpened. For those that are interested in somebody who has never met Jacqueline, has nothing, uh, no opinion on her or her personality or her character other than what I see what she posts online, which I hope you guys know is only a fraction of the real story. I can tell you that I try to give brands a chance no matter what. Do I think this is the best luxury eyeshadow palette ever? No, probably not. Do I think it's a perfectly acceptable luxury palette? Absolutely. Like I don't have any any issues with this. I will absolutely use this palette. I actually think it's a beautiful color story. It fits in with me. I'm gonna use a little bit of her setting powder too. Brilliant, luminous powder. Oh, this one's in brilliant. Some people might 
be judgy on her stuff. Some people will use it no matter what because, you know, they stan her and, and what she or the brand she's built for herself. I don't have anything negative to say about Jacqueline. The palette are the shimmers as creamy as any other eyeshadow that I've ever used. No. That's okay. They actually applied very beautifully. I did press a little bit more of the silver right on the center of my lids when I was doing my mascara just because it seemed like it had kind of gotten into the crack a little bit. But now that it's it's on and it's set down, I feel perfectly appropriate in this makeup. There's I can see why, you know, she dedicated this to her mom because I'm somebody who loves a smoky eye. I am a lady of a certain age. At the end of the day, is this palette worth the money to purchase it? Well, that's up to you. Depends on what you spend your money on. Some people have different hobbies. I collect palettes. I, I love makeup. It's it's a way for me to express myself and feel better about myself. And it's just makeup. It just washes off at the end of the day. So it's not that serious. And I think that's kind of the thing. When you look at buying anybody's brand, you know, are you taking it too seriously? You're reading too much into it. I think it's really sweet that she dedicated a palette to her mom. This is a great everyday year round palette. I think that this is this ends up being like the backbone to your palette collection or your wardrobe, your eyeshadow wardrobe if you need to. And then if you have to throw in something fun, a pastel, uh, something that's more on the, the burgundies, the raspberries, the purples, the colorful side, well, you've got this as a base to start with. If you're somebody who, you know, is a minimalist and, and wants something that's not horribly expensive but is going to work and you do like the cool tones, yeah, okay, I don't have any problem recommending this. Uh, and it is something that I'm going to use. So there you go. If that makes any difference to you, fantastic. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing really well. I hope you guys consider sticking around. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not already. If you're just passing through and, and our time here is done, well, then that's okay too. I wish you nothing but love and happiness. And if you do stick around, well, then I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.